just happening today. Uh, Margaret posted about the Mylar negatives to the cover of issue number 104 you sent her, uh, which prompted John G. to ask, this cover production process is literally, quote, the making of Cerebus number 104, unquote. Thumbs up. But can anyone confirm whether Dave or Bob Burden drew the carrot here? I guess this issue was drawn in Georgia when the Canadians, Dave and Gerhardt, invaded the U.S. to visit Bob. But I don't know if the flaming carrot on the cover was drawn by Dave or Bob. Uh, yes, that was the 10 days that shook Atlanta. Dave Sim uh, and Gerhardt trying to get Bob Burden's sight for the fact that it's just comics. You did the first, like, five, six-page carrot story over a weekend. Now you're having trouble doing an issue a year. Uh, it's, it's just comics. We're, we're going to come down there. We're going to buy a couple of drawing boards. Uh, and in 10 days, we're going to produce a 20-page comic book. Uh, comic, uh, comic card metaphysics on that one was the day that we left, uh, October 19th, 1987, uh, was the huge stock market crash, one of the biggest stock market crashes uh, in history. And it was also Karen McKeel's birthday, which I didn't know until I got back. So I don't know if those two were related, but uh, there you go. To which Dave Copperman responded, John, that's a good question that hadn't occurred to me. I just assumed it was Bert. Obviously, it's Gerhardt's colors, but there's a couple of things that make me think the line work might be Dave. Notably, the hands are less articulated with sausage fingers. Burden really drew almost absurdly detailed hands. Comparing line is sort of tough because Dave has always been an expert mimic, though Burden generally favored a very heavy brush, I'm assuming, line. The drapery on the figure could really go either way. Uh, I'm basing this on looking at the original reproduction in the covers collection. Possibly the notes in the original issue might clarify. So who drew number 104's carrot on the cover? And the answer to that was, yes, it was me. And the reason that we did that was uh, we're already traveling light because we're just going down for the 10 days. Like Bob Burden said, it was like a bank job. And uh, it was, okay, we want to get down there. We want to order the illustration board from whatever art store Bob orders his, his art paper from. And uh, buy a couple of drawing boards and pen nibs and stuff like that. Uh, we don't want to be buying all of Gerhardt's um, Dr. Martin colors and either hauling them all the way down there, <coughs> excuse me, or buying a $300 or $400 set of colored dyes and just leaving them with Bob Hurt. No, no offense against Bob, but... Uh, and we don't want to be hauling them back on the plane because Gerard's already got them here. So the cover was done here. The, the interior pages uh, were done in Atlanta. And uh, yes, I, I drew the carrot, I drew Cerebus, and Gerhard did the, uh, the cover painting on it. And uh, let's see, which segues nicely into a question I had. I recently found a large number of early Flaming Carrot issues, and the first Renegade Press issue, number six, I believe, lists you as the president and Denny as the publisher. I assume, I assume this was an issue that was more or less in the can when the split happened, and that's why you're listed. But was this a one-time thing, or did all the former AV titles that jumped to Renegade have you as president in their first issue? And I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. I, thanks to the Wolf Jenkins collection, I now have um, a set of uh, each of the other titles that, uh, that Art Vark Van Eyen published. And a couple of them do have the Renegade Press issues. Uh, but I don't know the answer. 
answer to that. So what I'm going to do is make this a contest. Any, anybody who does have all of those and can answer the question, was I listed as the president of uh, Renegade Press just in Flaming Carrot, Flaming Carrot's first Renegade Press issue? Or was I listed as president of Renegade Press in any other of the uh, non cerebus issues? And Bob Burden is, has finished signing all of the copies of Flaming Cerebus number one and has asked me to phone him so that we can knock over some stuff. And then he will be mailing up Hardvard Vanaheim's copies. There's like 30 of them. Uh, anybody that can answer that question definitively before, please hold for Dave Sim in August, I will send them one of the autographed by Dave Sim, autographed by Bob Bird, uh, Flaming Cerebus number one. And a certificate of authenticity. Uh, and have you seen this? Unfortunately, I can't get it big enough to read. I'll try to get a better copy if you have it. No, I had never seen it, but uh, I, wa I was definitely aware of all of these photographs and all of these panels and went, when was this done and why was this done? It looks like it's a King Features uh, syndicated uh, promo for Rip Kirby. Uh, and it's Alex Raymond showing how a Rip Kirby story is produced. And sort of, well, not sort of, actually quite uh, literally hoking it up with the fact that uh, he's using, um, this is uh, Beulah Bestor, uh, one of his favorite models, uh, modeling for Honey Doran. And uh, it's, it, it really, really wasn't necessary. That's, that's one of the things where uh, Alex Raymond becomes very suspect for me. You can see uh, that he's, he's doing a panel of, uh, Honey Dorian talking to her new suitor in uh, the Flies to Honey storyline, Flies to Honey storyline, and uh, he's using Beulah Bestor as the model for Honey, and uh, that's Ray Burns, his uh, assistant, uh, modeling for the for the new suitor, and it's the panel isn't really even close to how they look. <laughs> and is is no not really any different from anything else that Alex Raymond drew, which is why I maintain it was just he really wanted uh, a pretty young girl, and Beulah Bestor was definitely a very pretty young girl uh, in his studio in her swimsuit. Uh, the cover story being there that he has to be able to see the musculature. So if, uh, uh, if she won't pose in the nude, then she can wear a swimsuit. But you'll notice that Ray Burns isn't wearing, like, swimming trucks. Why, why is it that you don't need Ray Burns' musculature? He gets to sit there in a suit, and she gets to sit there in a swimsuit. It's like, I'm sorry, Alex. This is, this is just not flying with me. <laughs> Uh, and what did Mrs. Raymond have to say about this? Well, I think that's the thing. That she's probably bitten her tongue almost all the way through. Uh, because as soon as you, when you look at it and you go, uh, no, here's a, here's a panel with, uh, uh, with Honey Dorian where you just made her up off the top of your head. And here's the one where you've got Beulah of Estor to model for her, uh, there, there, there's no difference. And, and I, I don't really see what it is that uh, you're supposed to be getting artistically out of this. And, you know, the, the mansion that they had, a way, way disproportionately large house on May Apple Road in Stanford. Uh, you can just imagine what Helen Raymond has uh, as a very good devout Catholic uh, would be thinking with, you know, uh, two or three kids who are all, you know, seven, eight, ten years old. And 
only thing that saves you with that is you just don't understand art, dear. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's, it, it's for the cause of uh, 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 Rip Kirby being that much better than an artistic achievement. And it's like, she must have known, like knowing Alex, knowing when he was lying, knowing when he was uh, stretching the truth, uh, when he was being disingenuous, which all wives know with their husbands. It's like when you're an emotion-based being, you know when he's telling you the truth and you know when he's, he's hedging his bets. Um, but she was also a good Catholic, so there was absolutely no danger that she was, uh, was going to divorce him for that. You, will, you just... You're a good Catholic. You will just have to deal with this as best you can and um, clench your teeth, uh, maybe have a chat with the priest if it's really, really bothering you. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, was, it was a bad omen of where Raymond was going to end up uh, relative to his marriage and relative to adultery. And he should have known that. He should have known uh, if you if you can do this, if you can do Rip Kirby without Beulah Bestor and the Legion of Substitute Beulah Bestors coming over and, and changing into their swimsuit, uh, you're going to be better off doing that, at least for the sake of your marriage, and at least for the sake of Helen Raymond's peace of mind. The last thing she wants is a pretty 20-year-old 20 year hanging around in your studio in her swimsuit when Helen Raymond at that point is in her, whatever it would have been, uh, Weisgott in 1949. She would have been late 30s, mid 30s. Like you just, you just don't do that. But you're Alex Raymond, you get get what you want because you're, you're the breadwinner. Um, you know, the discussion is over. But very, very, very sad to see, but also uh, very nice to see, okay, this is where all of these photos uh, were done and what they were done for. So if you can, if you can uh, fax that to me in pieces or fax the, uh, the text to me in pieces, I'd be curious to read. Um, Alex Raymond's uh, rationalization in uh, in his various captions here. Okay, that's I, I will. I found it online, and I'll I'll talk to the guy that posted it. Of, you know, do you have this, or is this something you found online? And I will chase it down. Okay, well, I I would appreciate it because yes, this is this is something I hadn't seen. I've seen all of the all of these photos are in. Uh, the Rip Kirby collections from IDW, and they're all professional photos. You can definitely tell a professional photo from uh, just somebody taking a snap. And it's like, why do these professional photos exist? And um, what what were they used for? It's like, well, okay, this is definitely one of the things that they were used for. This would be a way for Ward Green and Alex Raymond to promote Rip Kirby and get as many Hearst newspapers and King Features subscribing newspapers to run this as a full page. Or you could, it, it would be very easy to chop this up and uh, uh, run it as a series or, or something like that. So offer it to any newspaper that's already subscribing to Rip Kirby and um, hope, hope that, uh, that this, this generates more entry. Well, there we go. That's, that's another two and a half hour. <laughs> two and a half hour. Please hold for Dave Sim. That's a long time for anybody to hold. Anything. <laughs> As uh, Lily Tomlin used to say, what you holding now? <laughs> uh, I'm holding my water right now, and uh, I'm hoping 
I will be able to alleviate that in the next uh, the next 10 or 15 minutes. Anyway, I appreciate your help with all of this, uh, Matt, and uh, I can say that so far we've had five people who have uh, who have swordfished uh, their way into a discount on uh, the CAN 9 portfolios, and I think there's probably going to be a few more because of all of the delays in the mail. I, I yeah. sent mine last week, I think. Uh-huh. So. Yeah, the, the thing is, it's a Thursday to Thursday thing. Uh, Roly only picks up the mail on Thursday. Uh, I sent so. I sent it directly to the Off White House because I know the secret location of the Off White House. Oh, okay, and that hasn't come in. So yeah, it's um, and and it used it used to be like a clockwork. Anything from the U.S. took a week and one day to come in, and lately it's like I said the uh, um, the, the Jeff Seiler Theosis letter. Uh, he was shooting to get it to me for last month's please hold, and I'm pretty sure it didn't come in until at least the second or third week of, uh, of June. And that was another one where he's got the off White House address, so I knew it was coming here. Well, that's I all, all my envelope has is a sheet of paper and two checks, and I was at the post office. I'm like, is this enough postage? Because I had two 55 cent stamps <laughs> the nice lady was like no you need another dime stamp it's a dollar 20 and i'm like okay <laughs> really a dollar 20 you used to be able to buy 10 comic books for a dollar 20 oh well but that's what happens when you get old like me all right thanks again matt say hi to uh paula and uh natasha and uh Student of the Year, Janice Pearl. Will do. Talk to you again next month. Yep, God willing.